Welcome, YouTube, to its Chow Time Pod. It's your host, Red. I got another compilation video today of astrology, of women just telling us about astrology and why uh, some of us uh, signs are shitty. <laughs> Please like and subscribe down below. I'd really appreciate that. And uh, let's get to the Chow. It's Chow Time. In 2023, we're going to be having a rare astrological transit and conjunction that only happens once every seven years. Really? And this particular transit and conjunction is the North Node and Jupiter conjunction. Now, this particular conjunction might be really nice for a lot of people. This is because the North Node in astrology can represent many things like your life purpose, your life path, and even the amplifications of something or the massive increases of something. What? And then Jupiter is that planet of good luck, good fortune, abundance, expansion, wisdom, knowledge, life lessons, and intelligence. <laughs> so whenever the Ooh, North Jupiter's Node is loaded. conjunct to a planet, it exacerbates and amplifies the energy of that particular planet. So when the North Node is conjunct to Jupiter, this could help to amplify and massively increase your good luck, your good fortune, your wisdom, your intelligence, and overall, like, just your optimism, your faith, and your... Damn, you just get smarter by the, the stars and planets doing their own thing? Fuck! I need to get into this astrology stuff, guys. Happiness. And this particular conjunction is happening in the sign of Taurus. So a lot of y'all, y'all might see some nice financial growth next year. Now there are well, certain... You hear that, Taurus? Get ready to be rich. ...rising signs that might benefit more from this transit than other ones. So I'm going to let you know which rising signs those are. Please so do. the first rising sign that might benefit most from this conjunction next year are Taurus risings. Then you also have Cancer risings, Virgo risings, Capricorn risings, Aquarius risings, and then Gemini rising. Damn, I'm not on the goddamn list. I'm not going to be rich this year. So Taurus Risings are going to be having this conjunction in their first house and Jupiter does really well in the first house because this is a house that it gets directional strength in. So whenever a planet gets directional strength, it feels like it's headed in the right direction and it feels really strong. And then with the North Node... When a planet gets directional strength, it gets direction. <laughs> Being there, that's really help that really helps to amplify the energy. Cancer Risings are going to be having this North Node and Jupiter conjunction in their 11th house, and the 11th house is associated with, like, your hope. Cancer Rising sounds like a new freaking disease. Hopes, your wishes, your <laughs> dreams, and financial gains. Virgo Risings are going to be having this conjunction in their 9th house, and Jupiter traditionally rules over the 9th house, so it feels comfortable in this house, and it could give you favorable results. Capricorn Risings are going to be having this conjunction in their 5th house, and Jupiter is the significator of the 5th house, so it really it does, it tends to do really there? well in the 5th house. Aquarius Risings are going to be having this conjunction in their fourth house, and Jupiter also does tremendously. Damn, how many houses does each of these signs have? They have like 12 houses each or something? Like, goddamn, they're rich. Well, in the fourth house, so that could be really cute. And then Gemini Risings are going to be having this conjunction in their 12th house, and while Jupiter is a functional malefic in the 12th house, that could still provide you with a lot of blessings, especially- Whoa, whoa Jupiter is in the 4th, 5th, and 12th house? Goddamn. Especially from the use of meditation and also just like practicing visualization. But yes, let me know what your rising sign is, and let me know if you're excited for the astrology of 2023. Click- Woo! 2023. <laughs> oh, let me read this. Please do Virgo. If you're a if astro if astrology isn't real, then why do all Virgos give off this vibe? What vibe exactly? The please do me. <laughs> Fuck. All right, Virgos. I guess uh, nobody's gonna wants to do you, according to her. Uh, POV just told me your moon sign. I'm an Aries. Okay. I'm a Gemini moon. I'm a Capricorn moon. I'm a Cancer moon. Okay. I'm a Libra moon. What's up with these moons? Why is there moons be um, like behind these things now? There's houses, moons, fuck. There's planets and shit, like. Today we are ranking the moon signs, most to least chaotic, so let's get into it. No, First up do. in our know. stability on 10 category, we have Taurus moons. Taurus moons are unfazed. They are the strength for the rest of us. 
Next up, we have Libra moons. Ooh, I'm a Libra. Libra moons value harmony and balance over everything. Do They're I? able to see all sides of a thing. They don't get carried away with their emotions. Lies. Next up, we have Aquarius moons. Aquarius moons get a bad reputation for being detached. But in reality, they're analytical. They're logical. That's, that's where they're comfortable. That's how they operate. And that's fine. Lastly, in this category, we have Leo moon. Leo moons can be dramatic and do the most, but at the end of the day, they are always going to express themselves. They have big feelings, but they get that shit out and they move on. Our next category, definitely a liability mm. endearing though. First up, we have Aries moons. Damn, Aries, Aries moons are quick to temper, but they are generally emotionally resilient and composed. Next up, we have our Pisces moon. Pisces moons feel everything and they are emotional and sensitive, but that doesn't mean it's unhealthy. We probably have a lot to learn from Pisces okay. moons. Next up, we have our Cancer moon. Cancer moons also get a bad rep. Yes, they can be emotional and moody, but again, having big feelings and being sensitive is not an unhealthy thing. I feel like she described the same thing for three of them so far. <laughs> Give them their space and once the mood passes, you're good to go. Next up, we have Sag Moons. When life is good, Sag Moons are great. But when shit happens and when life is bad, Sag Moons will avoid their feelings like the plague. Humor is a band-aid. Moving on to okay. our last category, the unwell category. Oh. First up, we have Capricorn Moons. Capricorn damn. Moons are exactly you like Sag goats. Moons. Except for the fact that they do not have any of the optimism. They do not have any of the lightheartedness. They whoa, have all whoa, whoa, why so pessimistic, goats? Come on, you're the goats. All of the avoidance and the unhealthy coping mechanisms, though. Or lack thereof coping mechanisms. <laughs> Jesus Next Christ. up, we have Scorpio Moons. Yes, it's true. Scorpio Moons are in the depths. They are going through it. So just be aware of that. Because they're strong, though. They don't need anyone. They don't need any help. But just... They're going through it. So all their life, they're going through it. And so they're just a struggle life. Is that what you're saying? No, they're going through it. Next up, we have our Gemini moon. Thinking about the emotional state of a Gemini moon makes me exhausted. These people's minds never stop. They are always going. They probably lay awake at night thinking about something that happened four years ago and reanalyzing how it could have gone differently and what they were embarrassed over what they said or didn't say. Damn, am I a Gemini? I think about things four years in the past if I fucked up. I'm like, fuck, should I fuck fix that? Or how am I going to fix that in the future? And lastly, we have the most unwell moon sign, our dear precious Virgo moons. Virgo moon's emotional Shitting state is high, strong. Like Gemini moons, their minds never stop. The overthinking is on 10. The anxiety is on 10. The rumination is on 10. Damn, am Check I on Virgo? the Virgo moons in your life. <laughs> they need a rest. Today, we are ranking them. Dude, everything she described, I think I could fall into almost every single category that she described. <laughs> so I know that you guys have an oh. app. Just in case you guys need them apps to help you out, you know, I got one for you. She'll take care of you guys. Asking me to review these astrology apps, and I finally did it. Here's my take. And to be honest, I think... Holy shit. There's fucking 12 apps? I think it depends on what you are looking for. We'll start with CoStar. I know everyone is wondering why I don't like CoStar. This is one of the many reasons. This gives nothing. This is very nope. hard to yeah, read. Definitely don't There's no definitely labels, don't the planets are small. And then you go to the table for clarity and it's just, it's yeah, what the fuck just is not that? it. If you're comfortable looking at it this way, have at it. Not for me. There are options where you can just look up your friend's user's names who use CoStar, but I definitely would not recommend listening to the horoscopes and the advice that they give. I have not found them to be <laughs> super accurate. I do like this feature. Did you guys hear that? That she doesn't find this particular app accurate. What the fuck is making things accurate other than it actually pertains to you? So people are just making shit up, and if it happens to land on you, you feel correct on it. If it doesn't, I'll go look for another app that tells me what I want to hear. Is that what's going on? Feature though. While I was doing these reviews, I found a brand new app that I will be using, I think, every single day. And it is Chani, I think. Dude, is this like a plug for Chani? She was like going to review all the apps. She did one app and then went straight to a new app and was like promoting it now.
<laughs> I believe the creator is a TikTok astrologer. I think her name is Chani Nichols. Shit. Fucking rooted in science, man. Chani's the fucking app for you guys. Better get that shit. I'll tag her if I can find her. Right off the bat, I love the chart. The houses are numbered. The planets are very... Anything, so I know that you truth. guys have been asking me to review these... <laughs> What I'm about to tell you will change your entire life. All right, guys. You guys ready for that life-changing moment? I think she's about to provide it for us. There's a branch of astrology called ethereal astrology. Oh, oh shit. My life just changed. And it's about using your astrological placements to figure out your soul's code. What? Ethereal <laughs> astrology is an ancient teaching that has been kept a huge secret. Did you say the, your soul's code? Like, when did technology and, like, coding come into our souls now? <laughs> or am I, like, tripping out on what's going on here? Great. Astrology is much more than personality. Oh, wait. Yeah, it's as though our souls are now of zero zero ones one zero zero ones one zeros. Is that what our code is for our souls? <laughs> It's a soul's way of communicating to itself its purpose once it incarnates and forgets everything. Your sun sign is how your personality reacts to being incarnated on Earth. Your mm -hmm. moon sign is an archetype for the toxic traits that have been holding you back from aligning with your soul's purpose. Okay. Your moon sign represents trauma from past lives and is what your soul needs to outgrow, illusions that your soul is addicted to. Your rising sign's archetype is the key to your soul's success. Your rising sign is what you need to embody in order to live out your soul's full potential in this lifetime. I know there are people with the moon and the rising the same sign, and that just means there are aspects of that sign that you haven't mastered that are holding back your soul, and it's really time for you to master it in this life. What I'm about to tell you will change your... Damn, the way she's saying it and everything, she is so serious about everything. It blows my mind. How you find your husband using astrology. One, look at your Jupiter placement. Okay. Two, check the sign that you'll be the traits or even signal signs of them. Wait, fuck, say that. Let me repeat that shit. Check the sign. That you'll be the trait or even sign of them. What the fuck? Am I misreading this? Check the sign. That will be the traits or even sign of them. What the fuck? Okay. I guess it's something that has astrology. I don't fucking know this shit. Two, three, check the house. This will be the location your guy will be. What the fuck? You could pinpoint GPS locate a guy by just looking at your astro signs? Then why are so many fucking me women fucking lonely and s single? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. Okay. You can't tell me astrology isn't real when most Taurus men look like this. I don't think I see too many Groots in real life. You guys tell me. If you're a Taurus, you guys look like Groot? Or, or yeah, Groot. If you're watching this between December 26th yeah, and December Asians 28th, in it too. you're going to want to bookmark this video because these are the days that you want to create. Right oh shit, you guys better bookmark this video. Manifest your New Year's resolutions. Don't wait until December 29th and onwards because that's when we have Mercury retrograde. We just came off of a really great Fuck new Mercury. moon too and the astrology is beautiful. So the 26th to the 28th are the days that you want to do it. Don't wait until the 29th. Alongside manifesting, this is also Oop, a I guess this is too late for you guys. I'll post my favorite New Year's <laughs> affirmations in the comments section. So follow to bring my comments to the top. If you're watching Men with fire or Scorpio Mars, give fuckboy energy. Fuckboy energy? Scorp Scorpio and Mars, note the self. Same thing with women with water or earth Venuses. They give like lady in the streets for free commission. Water Venuses. Lady in the streets, freak in the sheets. I think that's what I'm looking for. Sheets energy. 
women with <laughs> how's that child Did you guys learn anything did, uh, did any of that stuff help you guys out i mean maybe you guys find your mates when you guys fully understand astrology <laughs> please put a like and subscribe down below i'd really appreciate that and uh i'll catch you guys next time ciao time <laughs>